Welcome to Crazy Bob's Garage. Uh, I'm going to be doing an oil change on a uh, 2014 BMW M5 F10. Takes a lot of oil, by the way, 8.9 liters. Uh, and I'm going to uh, tell you there's there's not that many tools you need to do this job. Uh, literally no special tools or whatnot. So BMW made it easy. You need a 17 millimeter socket. Uh, you need a oil filter wrench of the correct size and beyond that uh, all the standard tools you need to catch the oil and uh, do the oil change. It's a, it's a pretty quick and easy job. So let's go ahead and get started. So once you're underneath the car, this is the oil pan, drain plug, oil filter. Inside the oil filter you should find uh, new O-rings and a new gasket for the oil drain screw. For the oil filter, I use the Mala oil filter. This is the original OEM uh, oil filter for the BMW M5. So you can either go to BMW and pay 25, 30 bucks, or you can go to Rock Auto and pay about 15 bucks. Okay, you'll notice in addition to the large O-ring that's in the kit for the oil filter, there's a small O-ring and a rather large copper O-ring. The large copper O-ring unfortunately will not work for the BMW M5, nor will the small rubber O-ring. So my advice would be to get yourself a small kit of 12 times 18 times 1.5 copper O-rings. Uh, and that is the correct size O-rings that you will need. So just remember, when you're getting ready to do your oil change, simple things are the things that are important. Lefty-loosey, righty-tighty. Meaning, we want to go counterclockwise to loosen it. And once it's loosened, you should be able to get the rest off with your fingers. But before you completely do that, get your pan in place so that the oil won't drain all over your floor. So one thing that's uh, really important, especially with the uh, M5 F10, is to know that there's a secondary oil cooler which sits in the front of the uh, car on the lower side. It has about one and a half liters of oil. So when you take your car to BMW, they're probably going to do the oil change the way I'm doing it right now, um, but they're probably not going to wait forever. So once this starts dribbling to a slow dribble or a, a rapid drip, they'll probably stop. I tend to wait. An oil change takes me about an hour because of the simple fact that I like to let it drip as much as possible to get as much of that extra quart and a half that's in that oil cooler out of the system. This is the oil cooler in the lower front. It's a perfect placement for cooling, not so perfect for damage and possible uh, problems. And unfortunately, the hoses from the oil cooler are slightly higher than the oil pan, which means oil will stay in the oil cooler even though you drain the oil. So this basic oil change procedure holds true not just if you have an M5, but for most cars. Oil filters are typically somewhere located on the bottom. Uh, some European cars have the oil filters located in the top portion, in which case you'll have to pop the hood and change the filter from the top. Uh, but in most cases, the procedure is fairly pretty much the same. So when you go to loosen the oil filter, you can do this while the oil is still draining. Again, same rule applies. Counterclockwise is going to be loosening, clockwise is going to be tightening. Once it's loose, you'll notice it's not really a messy process. <laughs> so you'll notice one side is narrow, the other side's not. So if I try to put this filter in there, it's just going to sit there. If I put it in this way, it's going to actually snap in. Best thing to do, take it, place it between your legs, and it'll snap. You'll hear an audible pop, and now you know the filter's in there. If you did make a mess, like we just did with our oil filter, and it splashed a little, take a rag, come up here and clean it all off. The last thing you want is 
that little bit of oil uh, can seem like a big, huge oil leak uh, when it starts dribbling down and as you drive it starts coating the bottom of your car. You really don't want that. One thing I like to do when I'm changing the oil, I have the new filter in. I'll go ahead and take one of my quarts of oil and I'll just pour a little bit of oil into the filter. This is uh, kind of a quasi priming, if you will, uh, so that when the engine starts initially and the oil pump starts sucking oil from the filter area, it's not completely dry. So when putting the oil filter back in, basically just guide it up into the hole and tighten it by hand initially until you can't tighten it with your hand anymore. And then you're going to go use the oil filter wrench to complete tightening. Now, when I say tightening, I really don't mean getting down on it and just getting it real tight. What I mean is you're going to go ahead and remember, righty tighty, you're going to go ahead and just thumb tight and you're going to go until the point where you feel, huh, I'm at an end. And as you can see, look, just my thumb. I'm at an end, I can't go anymore, I'm done. So as you can see, it's now been about an hour and a half. Uh, the, the worst thing you could possibly do with this car, because it has this oil, fill, uh, this oil cooler up front uh, that doesn't drain back into the pan very well, uh, you want to get as much oil as possible out of the car. So, uh, lesson learned for me, don't take your car to Jiffy Lube or Quick Lube or uh, any quick stop kind of place. Yes, they'll change your oil, they're going to drain it. Once it starts stripping at a rapid rate, they don't have time to wait an hour and a half like I just did to get an extra quart out. Uh, they're just going to go ahead and after 10 minutes put that plug back in and so you're going to have about a quart of old oil uh, in mixed with your new oil. So you'll put the screw back in and do this with your hand. Never use the ratchet to put the oil, oil screw back, oil bolt back in because if you do it with uh, a ratchet and the threads are crossed then you're going to damage your threads and that's never a good thing. So once I've hand tightened it, I clean off any excess oil that might still be lingering in the area from splashage. And then I go ahead and just tighten. Now for tightening, again, you don't want to tighten super tight. You don't want to use all your power. So I tighten hand tight and then I just give it a little nudge. So once I'm, once I'm seated, a little nudge, maybe one more crank and that's it. Now, something that you should never forget is don't get excited because you just drained your oil and yay, I'm great, and lower your car and forget to put oil in. So to avoid forgetting to put oil in, I always pop my hood before I even start working. So in other words, if I were to lower the car now and get in, I'd be like, hey, wait a minute, my hood's popped. And so that would be my indicator to myself, wait a minute, I need to put some oil in this thing. On the M5, here's where you're going to pour your oil. So basically just rotate counterclockwise half a turn. The cap will come off. I recommend placing the cap in a safe spot out of the way. Now I do recommend using a funnel, uh, though you don't have to. If you have a steady hand and you're, you're not afraid uh, that you may spill, you can do that. 2012 and up. M5. Uh, you're going to use about 8.9 liters. Uh, if you're going with quarts, then it's going to be about 9.5 quarts. So it's quite a bit. So we're going to go ahead and start pouring that in there and just be careful not to, not to hurry up and make a mess. And some of you may be wondering, hey, wait a minute, he's using Mobile One 040. Well, Mobile One 040 was licensed by Mobile One for BMW and only recently did they lose that licensing. Well, I contacted Mobile One directly uh, and they told me it was a, basically a licensing issue. It was not a formula issue. It was not an issue of will this not work in a BMW. So uh, I've been using it for a while. So the formula hasn't changed so I'm going to continue using uh, 040 even though the licensing is no longer actually written on the bottle. So I have three pairs of these, but two of them I need to throw away because I've worn them out. I just have been lazy. But then I have 
uh, four pairs of Nikes that are old and decrepit. I only have really one pair of New Balance that I wear on a regular basis, but really I could throw away. I have a pair of black ones I use for on time. So once uh, you've removed your funnel, then you go ahead and put your cap back on. It's usually a half a turn. Pet peeve of mine is the writing always toward the front. Just a pet peeve. You can put it on backwards if you'd like. And that was it. Now, the next step that we're going to have to take on a BMW is you'll notice there's a lot of stuff going on in here, but there's no dipstick. So, uh, what we have to do is we have to drive around for about a good 20 minutes or so, and then find a nice level area, and then we'll have to check the oil. And we do that from the driver's seat. So from the iDrive system, we're going to check the oil and see what it tells us. If it's still a little bit low, then I tend to like to add uh, in quarter to half quart increments. Uh, never pour an entire quart in, so always half quart increments if it's not showing max on your iDrive. And that's it. That's the oil change. Hey, so if you like the video, then uh, go ahead and uh, uh, subscribe to my other videos or uh, shoot me a quick comment and uh, let me know what you'd like to see. Thanks.